Good evening, everybody. Uh, Jason Branham, principal here at Westlake High School. Thanks for joining us for our future freshman registration night tonight. We have our counseling team here that's going to obviously be doing a great job leading you through this. So uh, thanks for joining us. We're going to wait just a couple minutes, let people get on, um, find the link uh, and things of that sort. So welcome. We'll wait just about two minutes and about 534. We'll get started here. All right, welcome again, everybody. Um, my name is Jason Brandon, principal here at Westlake High School. Our counselor is gonna do a fantastic job tonight talking to you about our future res uh, freshman registration process and things like that. I know obviously it's a much different year this year, um, whether it be eighth grade, ninth grade, or any grade in between and, and all on the outsides. It's, it's been a little bit of a crazy year. So this virtual way, uh, I think is a fun way to kind of get connected and, and get everybody some information. Uh, also, if you have friends or, or others that aren't able to be with us tonight, this will be recorded and put on our YouTube channel as well. So people can uh, view this later. Um, and then, uh, so we'll get that information going for you. So um, we will get started at this time. So again, welcome, welcome. Um, really, really excited to have our future freshmen uh, participating in this presentation this evening. Looking forward to a great year next year. Uh, obviously some uncertainty with what it's gonna look like, but we're excited to get kids back on campus and and back to some sort of normal, whatever that new normal is gonna be. So I'm um, really excited. Thank you guys so much for taking time to be with us this evening. Uh, and again, this will be recorded and on our YouTube channel uh, for you to use in the future because there will be a lot of information tonight. Um, and as well, any friends or family or others that would like to view it um, as well. So at this time, again, welcome. And I will turn it over to our outstanding counseling team. Hello there. Welcome to future freshman registration. We are so excited to have you guys here. Thank you for being here. Um, we wanna go ahead and start by just sharing with you all that this is the class of 2025. Sounds very crazy to hear that, but welcome our incoming freshmen. Welcome to the Warrior family, class of 2025. I'd like to get started by introducing our counseling team. To start with, my name is Mrs. Kirksey and I'm one of the counselors here. Um, I oversee the um, counseling for students with the last names of D through H. We have Mr. Lansadil, who is not here tonight. He is the counselor that oversees the counseling for students with the last names of A through C. And then we have Miss Emily Nelson, and she is here tonight. And she oversees the counseling for the students with the last names of I through MH. We have Mr. Shavarin, who is here tonight. And he oversees the counseling for the students with the last names MI through R. And then he also is the counselor for our students who receive English language learning services. And then we have Mrs. Fagan Simpson, who is here tonight. And she oversees the counseling for the students with the last names of S through Z. And then last but definitely not, least, definitely not least, we have an amazing college and career counselor. Her name is Mrs. Becky Mertel. She is not here tonight, um, but she is an amazing asset to our team. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and just introduce Mr. Chavarin, who is going to share some information about uh, presenting this um, presentation tonight in Spanish. So go ahead, Mr. Chavarin. Hi everyone, um, bien, bienvenidos a todos. Si gustan esta presentación en español, voy a hacer una presentación separada de esto. Uh, vamos a poner en el enlace aquí en esta presentación. Presentación. Um, Ms. Kirksey, do we happen to have that Zoom link available? We do. It should be in the chat right now. Okay, so si pueden mirar en el chat, nomás hacen click en ese enlace y ahorita voy a abrir la, el Zoom link ahorita. OK. 
Okay, so I think maybe we'll give just a minute for those who want to leave to go to that presentation. They can go ahead. We'll get started in just a, just a minute. Okay, and just keep in mind that information will stay in the chat box for anyone who needs that. So let's go ahead and get started. So our freshmen, we are so excited to get them on campus. We have a freshman orientation that will be held the week of August 9th that will be here before we know it. More information on that week, the breakdown of um, when the students will be coming that week will be coming to you guys in the summer mailer this upcoming summer. But just a, a information about what we do with our freshmen that week, um, we provide them with a list of their classes. They get their locker assignment. They get their PE clothes and locks if they're in the RPE classes. They get their textbooks, their English novels. And then the most fun thing for them that day is they get to come and take their school photo ID. And they get to walk out that day with their very own ID like this, this awesome one in this picture here. Um, please know that we also have a WOW week, a WOW program, um, it's just an amazing program that we offer for our warriors that are incoming ninth grade students. At this time, we don't have exact information on when that will be held, but please keep your eye out for that. Um, our middle schools will also be providing our um, current eighth graders with that information once we have it all set to go. And then it'll be all over our website as well, counseling website, as well as the Westlake High School website. So be looking for that. That's called the WOW program. And that's for, it's a fun few days for our incoming freshmen. So we look forward to getting that information to you all. So what we wanna do is go over just briefly the graduation versus the college admissions requirements. Because when you come to high school, you're gonna be working primarily on your graduation requirements. These here on the left are going to get your, your diploma in June of your senior year. If you are four-year college bound, meaning that in your senior year, you want to apply to a four-year college, UCLA, University of Oregon, anything like that, then you want to be working above and beyond your graduation requirements on what we call A through G requirements. So on the left here, graduation requirements, you're going to need a total of 230 credits overall you're going to take about 60 each year. And within that 230, you're going to take certain credits within certain subjects. So 40 of those must come from English, for example. And we as your counselors are going to work with you this year and every year going forward to help you select the right courses that will keep you on track to meet that graduation requirement. If you let us know that you're for your college bound or for your college interested, we're gonna work with you as well on making sure the classes you select will keep you competitive for college admissions senior year. The biggest difference between the two are a D for diploma, a D or higher in any class will allow you to earn the credits for that class for high school graduation purposes. However, C for college, you do need a C or higher in all of your CP level or higher classes in order to receive that credit, future potential credit for colleges when you go to apply. So D for diploma, C for college. That's our trick for remembering. Okay, so as you all know, because we have this flyer that um, the middle school shared, but just a good reminder, next week is the um, registration week for our incoming ninth grade students. Um, us five counselors are really looking forward to meeting with all of our students who choose to come and meet with us. Please know the breakdown of how we're doing these meetings. These are going to be open. It's going to be an open Zoom session. And it's the day breakdown is based upon the birthday month of the students. And we will be meeting with them during the students reinforcement time. So for example, if the student is um, in the A learning model in that cohort, then in the afternoon, they will meet with us on the designated day of their birth month. And so we've gone ahead and just reminded you by um, putting this breakdown. And again, this entire presentation will be on our counseling website, as well as the Westlake High School website. Um, so you'll have this reminder as well. So we really are looking forward to meeting with our students next week 
um, any questions that they have, we, we really encourage them to come on. They're going to be meeting with us one-on-one -on -one in a breakout room. Um, and of course, we won't be able to spend, you know, a long, long time with them, but we will be able to answer their questions and help them to choose their classes if they have questions about that. On this slide is the Zoom ID, um, as well as the meeting code, the meeting ID and the passcode. So we look forward to seeing them next week. Okay, so essentially what we're going to do today is we're going to go over piece by piece the course selection registration form. And you will have access to this form starting. Ms. Kirksey, when do we have access starting? When do they have access to this form? Is it starting over after this presentation? It's going to be after this presentation. So I would say at the very latest, they'll have access to it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So you're going to see the snippets that we've put into the slides here to help you work through your own form once you have access after this presentation. Uh, right now, the form is actually a Google form. This is brand new for us. Previously, we've used good old paper and pencil, but because of COVID, we're adapting, we're modernizing. So we've got our awesome Google form. There is only one submission opportunity. So please make sure that you bring your questions to those meetings with your counselors. We'll answer them and you can actually fill it out as you speak with us and then submit. We'd rather you save all your question opportunities um, until you have a chance to get those questions answered rather than submit and then ask your questions. At that point, the form has already been submitted on your behalf. The deadline to submit is going to be next Friday. So you're going to have until after this presentation all the way through next week. We'd like to meet with you again during those specific times but you have up until Friday to think about anything that you've gleaned when you meet with us and get that form in. Um, let's see, I think that's good for this one. Oh, I did want to say Ms. Kirksey too. Actually, one more thing. You don't have to meet with us. We would love to meet with you if you can make it into that Zoom and introduce ourselves and see you. But we understand that there are, there's a lot going on in our lives right now. And if you feel very confident in your responses in this form and you don't have any questions for us, you do not have to meet with us. So we're here if you would like to. If you don't have to, don't worry. Go ahead and fill out the form, hit submit, and we will be able to receive your responses all the same. Perfect. Okay, so this is a great tool that we're excited to introduce to our students. So this is an academic tool. We really do encourage our students starting from freshman year, maybe even before you get to Wesley High School, to go ahead and plan ahead and map out your ninth through 12th grade coursework. Um, to do this, we have a four-year planner tracker. And this tracker is, has been created to assist our students with creating their own roadmap to graduation allowing them to take ownership of their future um, and ensure that they're meeting their goals by using this tracker as they complete the form. And so it really helps our students to know what classes are prereq classes as they move through from ninth through 12th grade, um, planning goals, working backwards, so really starting early to go ahead and plan ahead, tracking graduation and that A through G progress as they go for you know, those students who want to be college bound immediately from Westside High School. And for those students who are planning on doing a JC, then it helps them to plan what they wanna do for that, as well as those who are gonna go straight on and do a vocational program. So it really is a very comprehensive program that we really do encourage our students to do. Please do know that we meet with our students every year as we do registration for the following school year. And we do um, touch base with them about their progress in the four-year planner tracker, just so that they can be you know, kind of kept on track with how that goes. So. This is a great tool, we encourage you. This is obviously, this is gonna be on that course request contract. And um, you guys can click on that link and you can see what that tracker looks like. So we're excited for our students to use that. This is just an overview of the tracker. So that link will take you to this form where you will make a copy and be able to save it in your Google Drive for future use. So you can use this all four years and adapt it as you go. So on the left, you can see plan your future. Right now, we filled in a typical uh, schedule for a sophomore, sorry, for a freshman. So you can see there's the English, the math, the science. Everything that you see here is actually going to be available within the drop down feature in this form. The little arrows indicate that if you click on that box, a drop down list of options will appear based off of the subject that is next to it. 
Then if you go to the right, you can see we have the Westlake High School graduation requirements. And here you can just check the boxes off and see your credits accrue all the way over to the right column. Underneath is the separate college admissions A through G requirements. And that's what we discussed in an earlier slide. These look a little bit different as you can see now visually. And you'll want to track these independently to make sure you're going to be on track for your college applications, not just your diploma earning graduation. Okay, so this is a list. This document also is in our course contract for you guys to access and and um, open up. And what we're recommending you guys do is when you're sitting down with um, parent, family member, whoever's helping you with choosing your ninth grade classes, we're recommending that you click on this, the link, the hyperlink, it will bring you to this document. And this is every single course that we offer at Westlake High School. Um, and in our course, there's a course directory, the CBUSD course directory, which, which describes every single course that is here. So we're, we're really suggesting that you keep this open while you're going ahead through each subject and choosing your classes. This is essentially every class that's offered at Westlake High School. And it also breaks it down to the categories of the A through G and what those requirements are and um, what's, what's considered an elective, what's considered a visual performing arts. And we'll talk about all of these um, different categories as we go through this presentation, but this is a great resource for our students and their families. So I know that last picture was really small and kind of obnoxious looking. I promise that when you actually see the Google form and you click the link, you can see it with real eyeballs. You don't need a microscope, um, but just for the presentation purposes, it, it doesn't look very great, I understand. Um, this is going to be the very first part of the registration form. We're gonna ask for all this contact information. When you put your parent uh, name and uh, email address on there, you're basically signing off on the courses that your students selected, basically saying you approve of them. Why are we asking for all of this information? Because we will be in contact with you throughout the spring, the summer, before school starts, if we need to make any changes to your schedule outside of what you've selected on this form. It's important that we have the student cell phone number. That seems to be one of the best ways to get a hold of the students versus the emails. This is gonna be really helpful if there's a conflict in the schedule. So if a student selects a music course that's only offered period one and they select another course that's only offered period one, we can contact you. We can figure out what you would prefer. If we can't contact you, then we make that call. We'd rather get your input on it though. So it might seem like the third degree getting all the contact information, but really it's just to help us get you the courses that you would like. Okay. So we are looking at um, oops, the amount of classes that our freshmen take. So when they come to Westlake High School, they are taking a total of six classes, which will mean one of their classes will be an unscheduled class. So for our students, and we'll talk a bit more about this later in the presentation, are all ninth grade students are required to take health. Many of our students take health at Westlake High School. It is a one semester class. It's also a five credit graduation requirement class. Students cannot graduate from high school without taking this health class. So we try and do it in freshman year. It's just a one semester class. If students take it at Westlake High School, it is paired with a class called College and Career Seminar. College and Career Seminar is an amazing class that really is an introduction to what happens after high school. Our students are introduced to our amazing, comprehensive, um, everything post high school planning program called Naviance, should they take this class. Um, study skills are, are worked on, um, career interest surveys, many different things are done in that college and career seminar class. So if they take health at Westlake High School, it's paired with college and career seminar. Should students take health over the summer between eighth grade and ninth grade, then that allows them one additional elective class to take that goes in that um, those six classes. Please do know that there is no social science requirement, no history requirement for ninth grade students. They start that in 10th grade with world history. So if you're looking at the required courses, again, this is gonna be on your contract. It's English, math, science, health, 
if they choose to take it at Westlake High School. If not, they'll have an additional elective PE and then an elective class. And again, that PE will break down later in the presentation as to um, what their options are for ninth grade PE. So we start with English on the registration form. There are three English options. The first two will be in general education and the last one listed on there is special education. So if your student has an IEP that dictates special education English, then you will select that last option. If you do not have an IEP, then you will be picking from either English 9 CP or English 9 honors. If you are in, actually I'll save that for the next slide. Um, the difference between the CP and the honors class is mostly going to be in the essays and the writing. So in the honors class, you're going to have timed in class essays. In CP, there's going to be more guidance and more essay practice before they will ask students to participate in those kind of more intense anxiety inducing um, essay writing situations more in sophomore year. So the honors class is always going to be more in depth, more critical thinking, and also likely more homework. Okay, so this is just a bit more about those English classes. And our hope is that this um, allows you to look at the class that you're in now in middle school, look at your progress, how you've done in this, in the, um, the um, middle school eight class and um, just guide you as to choosing what class is going to be appropriate for you in ninth grade. So looking at English um, 8CP, if you're in that class in your middle school and you're doing well, you would just move right on into that English 9CP. Um, if you're in English 8 honors and you're getting a C or a lower and you're kind of struggling a little bit, we would recommend that you do the English 9 CP class in high school. Um, we recommend that only because we, you know, as everyone might know or not know, it's quite a transition into high school. And so we wanna make sure that you're all appropriately placed in the right classes. If you're in English 8 honors and you're earning an A or B and you're finding it to be manageable, challenging, but manageable, then English nine honors is the right class for you at West Bank High School. And we realize this is a big decision. If you, you know, you've not ever been in high school and um, perhaps you don't have older siblings that are already there to really tell you about it, then that would be a good reason to come and meet with us next week. And we can walk you through this. We can look at your grades with you and walk you through this and help you to determine the right level. The next class that we're gonna ask you to pick is your math class. And here you can see that we have many more than just the three English options. It is okay to ask your current math teacher in middle school what class they would recommend for you. If you are on the cusp of trying to choose between a CP or an honors level course, go ahead and ask for their recommendation. They've seen your math abilities over the last year and they know your strengths and weaknesses as a math student the best. So getting their opinion might sway you either way into taking on that challenge with the honors class or sticking with your current CP class, for example. So these are just some basic differences between Algebra 1 CP and honors. So you can see that the homework load does go up a little bit, not quite double, for the honors class. And that's because the questions are going to be more in-depth and require more critical thinking. Um, and there's just going to be more more of an expectation on independence as well. So for example, the teacher will give guided notes in the Algebra 1 CP, but they'll expect you to take your own notes from scratch in the Algebra 1 honors class. And this kind of mirrors our CP and honors differences across all subjects, but this was just a specific example for the Algebra class. As you can see, we have the Algebra 1A option which is how you can break algebra up into two separate years. So if math is not your strength and you haven't been doing as well as you would like in your current math class, this might be the right fit for you. You can definitely talk to us about that when we meet with you. Um, algebra 1 CP and honors are both options as well as geometry CP and honors. So if you're in math eight, you can't skip to geometry. You have to take that algebra one, that's a state graduation requirement. So we've got to make sure to fit that in somewhere. If you're already in geometry, then you've got algebra two CP and honors. There is an AP computer science principles class listed down there as well. 
This would be in addition to one of the math classes here as like a math elective, but not necessarily in place of the algebra, the geometry, more of your standard math classes. And of course, if you have an IEP and you have special education math dictated by that IEP, then we have a class for you as well there. Okay. Oh, sorry, wrong way. Okay. So here what we're looking at is um, similar to the, the English slide, just a guide to help you um, choose the right class. Um, so we can go through these real quickly. If you're in math eight, struggling a little bit, um, then we are recommending our algebra 1A. And so um, algebra 1A, we have two, two, it's two parts to this class. We have an algebra 1A and an algebra 1B. This is an awesome opportunity for our students to really get that full Algebra 1 experience, especially if math comes as a struggle. So Algebra 1A is the first half of the entire Algebra 1 curriculum placed into one full school year. And so after successfully passing Algebra 1A, our students then move on the following school year to Algebra 1B. Um, again, great way to really get that full um, understanding of Algebra 1 and pass that Algebra requirement, which is a graduation requirement. For our students who are in Math 8 and really doing well, A, B, or C, then they're going to go on to 1CP. They also will have the option to go into Algebra 1 Honors. So if they're finding that Math 8 was real easy and they want that challenge, that Algebra 1 Honors is a great option for them as well. Both of them are great classes. If students are in Algebra 1 in middle school getting an A, B, or C, then they have that option of moving on to Geometry CP or Geometry Honors. So the math order goes Algebra 1 to Geometry to then Algebra 2. If a student's in Algebra 1 Honors and doing well, then they will automatically move forward per their choice to Geometry Honors in freshman year. And then for our students who are enrolled in geometry honors in eighth grade or have successfully completed it by the time they get to ninth grade and they get an A or B in that class, then they move on to algebra two honors as a freshman at West Sec High School. So our hope is that this helps you a little bit to guide you to what class that you would be taking in math as a freshman. And just remember as well, we'll be posting a recording of this webinar and the slides on our counseling website. So you'll be able to reference this and slow down and go over it with your student. Now we're moving on to science. Science is biology. Sorry, after all those options in math, it might seem a little disappointing to not have so many options right now, but I believe that Westlake is really known for its science program, to be honest. And we're building this gorgeous new uh, science building on the campus. I don't know if you've had a chance to come by, but it's really flushing out right now. So we're hoping that for you guys, probably your sophomore year, you'll be able to move in there and take a lot of these upper level science classes that Westlake is so infamous for. You have to take biology as a freshman first, and then you will take chemistry as a sophomore. After that, you'll have access to all of those upper division and exciting uh, science options. So again, we have the biology CP or the honors if you're in math 8 CP. That might be a natural um, transition into the bio CP. We also, as always, have our special education selection for biology. Okay, and then here's that um, just pathway, just helping you all to make that decision. So for our students in eighth grade who are in science 8 CP, they will move right on into biology CP. For those that are in science eight honors and they get a C or lower struggling a little bit, we are recommending that they go into the biology CP level. And for our students who are in science eight honors and getting an A or B, finding it manageable, just challenging enough, then we do recommend that biology honors class. Definitely a difference in the bio CP and the bio honors in um, really just the pace. Um, and so we, we want everyone to really make the right decision on what class is right for them as they move forward. Okay, so we have a new process this year. For those who are returning Westlake families, you're probably used to what we used to call the honors petition process. So this was for students who were in a CP class but wanted to advance to the honors level. They had to petition and there were tests 
and there were actual petition forms. It used to be real carbon copy forms, like when your student goes on a field trip, that type of paper. But now we're so technologically advanced, everything is going to be done via Google. And also we're getting rid of the tests and the petition process entirely. Right now we're having a new process called waivers. And this essentially just wants us, it's an opportunity for us to give you the information that you need to make sure you're making the right course selection for your child. The honors courses are rigorous. They're designed to be more work, frankly. So we just want you to be aware of the fact that when you select an honors class and it potentially does not turn out to be a good fit, there may not be space available for you in a CP class should you wish to level change. That's really our disclaimer with the waivers. It, we do really want you to get an understanding of honors individually by course, but also in terms of the whole schedule. So if you have one honors class, that might be manageable, but having three might be much less manageable considering the increased amount of workload that each will be giving you. So honors at the middle school level is going to translate a little bit differently at the high school. In the high school, our students are just doing a lot more. They're involved in sports, they're involved in volunteering, they're getting jobs, and it can be a lot more challenging to find the time for all of the extra honors classes. It doesn't mean that you're not smart if you're not in honors, far from it actually. But we all have to find our own version of balance. And sometimes that means we cannot spend five hours a night doing homework. Some of our students do want to make that commitment, and that is perfectly okay if they're happy doing so. But some of our students have other things going on, and that's not what they envision their academic experience to look like. Okay, and so just, you know, Miss Nelson, you put that perfectly. Just This is just yet another reminder where if you're really just not sure, your student's not sure, um, you know, you as a parent are not sure we, this is a good reason for them to come and meet with us next week. And we can really walk them through it and ask a few clarifying questions to help them to make an informed decision. So we look forward to that. So now we're getting back to our health. So again, talked about that it's just a one semester class, not just, it's a very important class, one semester graduation requirement paired with a college and career seminar, as I shared before. Um, so when we're looking at the choices on the course contract, there's, you have, the students have the option of taking it at Westlake High School. It's a year long, one semester of each. For our students who are planning on taking it over the summer, those are the students that already know that, that they, they have another elective that they want to take in place of um, the elective that they're already taking. So a good example of this is a student who is wanting to take their language starting freshman year, but perhaps they're also part of the choir or they're in our band program, or um, they definitely wanna take that art media class that their older brother took at Westlake High School as a freshman, that would be the perfect example. If they really are just not even sure why they would need another elective, we do highly recommend taking health at Westlake High School. College and Career Seminar is an awesome class that's paired with it. So these are the options. One of the, um, potential options that we're looking at is offering health as an online class during the school year. Again, it will only be one semester. This right now um, we're providing as a potential option just to see what the interest is for our incoming ninth grade students. So please note there's no a guarantee we're going to be offering this. This is just for, um, we just want to present this option to you guys to see if this is something you'd be willing to do. And if enough students say yes, then we might just possibly be able to offer this. So this is that online health class. It runs period one if available. It will be one semester, which would mean students would already be enrolled in six separate classes in addition to that one semester health class. Um, and so again, students can talk with us next week about this possible option. If this is something that maybe looks good to you, you don't plan on doing it over the summer, maybe you don't want that full year class, then this would be something that you might want to look into. Okay, so just another option for you. Make sure you're an early bird though, if you're putting that you want a period one class because it can sound really good in theory until that alarm goes off. So know your sleep habits and know your body. Um, now we're gonna move to PE. So we have five ways to earn physical education uh, credits and you do need two full years or 20 credits of PE credits. That was redundant, but you need, you need two full years of PE credits in order to be eligible to graduate with your diploma. Um, PE is not a part of A through G. The colleges don't 
care about what type of PE class that you take. They do like to see, you know, involvement in leadership and extracurriculars such as sports. But um, at the end of the day, this is really just a graduation requirement. So you can take old fashioned PE similar to what you've been taking at the middle school. That would just be the PE option at the top. You can take yoga. And this is a really popular um, option for our students because it's a little bit less uh, impact and sweaty, I would say. But the because it is so popular, we do have to give priority to our upper class name. So please know that if you select yoga and all of the you know sophomores, juniors, and seniors want this class, that you'll be placed into PE. But definitely throw your hat in the ring if you would like to be considered for yoga. Uh, we have the color guard. And we have the marching band. These are two separate ways as well that you can earn your PE credits. And then lastly, you can earn your PE credit playing a sport. So it's kind of interesting. We have three sports seasons, but we run on a semester. So right now in the middle school, you're on a trimester. We're going to move to a semester system. So two grades every year. And then our sports run like on your middle school trimester system. So what that means is that you need to plan on taking two sports or three sports to get the full year of credit in that sport. If you only take one sport uh, and then you don't take another sport for the next season or the next semester, then you'll be placed in a PE class so that you'll be paired with one um, half PE and one half sport in order to earn that full year of credit. I know you can't click both PE and sport, so if you're gonna be planning on just doing one sport and it, there is no off season, just select sport for right now and we'll be in touch with you about how to select PE for the second part of your year. We do have another um, interest question there on the bottom. I love that we are really adapting our curriculum. I know that this has been a long, long year for all of us. But one of the silver linings is, is that we are being forced to adapt to the, the new needs and, and ways of our students. And a lot of that means giving them more options and being more flexible with how we deliver our courses. So here we have a PE option that will be at the end of the day, but it will be an online or hybrid PE option. It might sound kind of silly to take online PE, but we do have a lot of students who go outside of Westlake to take online PE. They like to make room in their schedule for their electives, for their music classes, for their language classes, and they are looking to kind of get PE out of the way. So because our students are interested in that option, we thought we would try to offer it here at Westlake. If that's something you would be interested in, then please make that selection and just know if we don't get enough interest that you'll take regular PE instead. Okay, so we are looking at the electives. Um, we have lots of good information to share with you about our electives. So again, going back to this health, I feel like I'm, I'm giving you an abundance of information about health. Remember, if students take health at Westlake, then they are left with that one elective choice that will go into their six classes. If they take health over the summer, then the students are able to select two electives. So what's important is that we ask that students select, if it, select an elective option for all three elective slots listed. I thought that was a tongue, tongue tire right there. So we ask that these electives be different electives because we really do need to know um, what their alternate choices are. Um, we do our best to give our students their first choice. We can't promise that though. Um, we do have some classes that are more popular than others um, just based on hearsay and they are amazing classes but we, all of our electives are so amazing. So we do really ask that um, you'll see on the forum that they have the ability to, and we ask that they do it, choose three different electives. And so they will be used as alternates. Please know if students do not choose electives and we do choose for them without knowing them, which is hard. So we really do ask that as you guys are going through this form and it's a lot, it's a, it's a big Google document, um, asks a lot of questions, but it's all important information. We just ask that you really ensure that your choices are accurate and um, you select um, every question that's being asked, and make an answer for. Yeah, just to clarify, you're gonna have three different uh, drop-down options listed for you to select an elective um, on the actual registration form. So three separate times you'll be asked the same question, pick a different class each time, 
And then if you know that you're taking health outside of Westlake, we're gonna use the first election slot and the second election slot as your chosen electives and use that third one as the alternate. So we're doing it in an order of operations way too. So one, two, three in that order as you see them on the form. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so these are some of our um, electives here. Not all of them. These are our visual art electives. We have art media, we have ceramics, and we have video game design. And as students progress through these classes, there are more advanced options of them as well in the future. So our freshmen really do have the smallest amount of course options available to them because everything right now is a prerequisite course in order to gain access to all of those advanced art classes and science classes. We have to make sure that our students have the foundational skills down. So art media, I would say is probably our most popular class for our freshmen to pick as an elective. Ceramics is really popular, but it's also really popular with our upperclassmen. So that is one that you will definitely wanna make sure you're listing an alternate for um, because sometimes we don't have enough room for, for our freshmen. Um, and video game design is a little bit new this year. We had game design prior, and now it is strictly video game design. And all three of these art classes meet the art requirement to be A through G college eligible. So looking at our, so here's some more electives, and these are more the performing arts. And um, again, there's many that you're gonna find on that, um, that one document that we told you was a little bit small in the presentation, but um, is a, a lot easier to read when you go ahead and open up the document. These are just a few of our amazing performing art classes. We have audition music, which can be um, um, any one of our band classes. We have a lot of band classes. We also have a concert orchestra program, um, orchestra strings. We have theater, an amazing theater program, and then we have a great choir program and different levels and all of those um, you know, four different subjects there and um, ways of performing and just a really great performing arts program at Westlake. So any questions that the students have, they can ask us about that. And there's more information on that form as well. I know it looks very scantily presented right now, but within each of these options, there are again, like there are four theater options. So a student can do theater one, theater two, theater three, 34, or technical theater where they work more of the backstage part versus the acting and choir. There's the general choir. And then we have several different audition choirs once they have done the general choir class. Um, we also have at least five, six, seven different music classes that students can audition into, or if they want to learn an instrument for the first time, can start um, their freshman year of high school. That's true. Perfect. And then we have some kind of non-art electives. We have computer programming. Again, from the last, 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 last slide, we had that AP computer science principles course, which is technically a math, but we use it as an, our students use it as an elective class. If you take the AP computer science principles course, that will open up the further uh, computer science programming courses available to you in coming years. So if you're thinking of, a uh, science, computer science, STEM major, then you might be interested in that pathway. Right now we have three computer science classes, AP CompSci principles, which is available to freshmen would be the first one. Um, computer programming is not a part necessarily of that pathway, but you can certainly take computer programming as a freshman and then take principles the next year or um, speak with a teacher about maybe advancing into the next level of course based off of your personal experience in programming. And then we have AVID. AVID is one of my favorite electives personally. It is designed to be a four-year program. We don't make you sign your name in blood when you commit to this class freshman year, but if you like it, we'd love for you to stick with it all four years. It's really all about advancing students who perhaps don't have as much institutional knowledge about the college process through high school, giving them all the opportunities that they need to be successful successful to find out who they are and what they want to do and then getting them into that two or four year college after the program is complete that they um, are a good fit for. So this is all about student support through the high school experience with the goal of getting them onto that next level, a big future focus in the program, guest speakers and 
learning how to take notes and how to be a student. It's a very cool program. Okay, so now we look at our languages, our foreign languages. So um, one of the things that I'm not sure if we discussed earlier, but one of the graduation requirements is either a year of a visual performing arts class or a year, one year of a foreign language. Um, for the moving on to a four year university, it is two years of a language, the same language that's required. And many of the universities do require or do recommend that third year. So foreign language is very important um, at the high school level. So we have, we offer four languages at Wessex, Spanish, French, Chinese, and then ASL, American Sign Language. So ASL is offered only starting in sophomore year. It's 10th through 12th grade. And um, so our freshmen do not take ASL typically. Sometimes there's exceptions, but for the most part, they don't start until 10th grade. Spanish, we actually have four years of, so they can they have the ability to go Spanish one, two, three, and then AP Spanish. And then the same with French, French one, two, three, and then AP. And then also the same with Chinese, one, two, three, and AP. So if they're gonna do Spanish, French, or Chinese, and they have the goal of doing all four years, then they're gonna go ahead and start as a freshman so that they have all four years to do those languages. Just for some of our students who are already native speakers of any of these languages, and they would like to possibly advance to a higher level than one, please know that this is something that we do regularly and we're excited to help them with. They come in freshman year um, and they start with um, in that first year of language and within the first couple of weeks of school, our teachers will assess them and then move them to the appropriate level and get them to the right class. So um, great foreign language program that we have at Westlake and those are the choices. We do have students who choose to take a different language. Perhaps they have um, a different home language or they're just interested in a different language, um, Japanese, Korean, German. Um, even if we don't offer the class, you're welcome to find another program that does. So we don't want to force you into a language that is not your preference. Most of our students take Spanish. Most of our students, 99% of them do take a language through Westlake, but I just wanted to make that option available if you had another language in mind. Um, okay, so AP Human Geography is a popular uh, elective option for our freshmen. It's the most academic elective option that you can select, and it's the only AP class outside of the AP Comp Sci Principles uh, math elective that's available to freshmen. So this class is beyond honors level rigor. It's AP Advanced Placement Level Rigor. And the AP program is designed to be universal across the world. So you can take this class anywhere, and it will have the same contents. And then at the very end of the year, you're going to take a test, an AP College Board test on this subject. And how you do on that test will determine if a college might potentially give you credit for taking this class, almost as if you took it at their college. So that's the really cool part about the AP program is you could potentially go into college with a lot of credit under your belt. And that credit translates to cost savings because in college you pay by the, the credit or by the class. So this is a great option for our students if they wanna test those AP waters. It is a rigorous course, no doubt about it. So if your student wants that uh, free-spirited elective to take a break between their academics, then art media might be the better choice here. Um, if you're just a serious student and you love books and you love writing and you love analyzing, then this would be a great elective for you. Again, we're asking you to select your preferred option here and then based off of interest, we will create our master schedule around that. So go ahead and indicate here. If you don't wanna take AP Human Geography at all, which you don't have to, it's just an elective, just click the option at the bottom. It says you're not interested in these options. Perfect. So this goes back to what Ms. Nelson was talking about is knowing our bodies here a little bit and our sleep schedules and and I realize right now, probably everyone's sleep schedules are a little bit off because of this pandemic and what that's done. But ideally, we're back into a regular schedule next year. And um, again, we start at first period, the option of starting at first period and going through seventh period. Please know that first period does begin at 7.25 a.m. That's a nice early start time. We have many students who love that option. 
many students who don't really have a choice because they come with an older sibling and that's when they want to start. Um, and so typically for our freshmen, if they take a first period and they're not playing a sport in seventh period, then they end um, pretty early in the day. So they start at that first period and they end at six period. If a student starts at second period, that means they have an unscheduled period one. And that means they would start class at 822. Please know that for our students who are participating in a sport, they do typically have an unscheduled period one because they go periods two through seven because their day is later due to their sport. So just something to consider. Again, if you have questions about this, you can let us know. Um, but this is these are the two different start times we have at Westside High School. Okay, so this is the summer school portion of the form. We're going to ask if you are taking a summer class, whether it's health, whether it's another class, that you let us know. Um, students take classes during the summer in order to get ahead and open up an elective slot like Ms. Kirksey was sharing earlier. But um, we want you just to go through here, that link that you can see that says for summer school opportunities visit, and then there's that hyperlink, that's going to actually give you a flyer with some different uh, programs available to you where our students in the past have successfully completed summer coursework. Um, we have the Get Ahead program. We, there is Apex and BYU online that are really popular options as well. So there are quite a few options. Some are free and some cost money. But at the end of the day, we just like to get a sense of what you're doing over the summer because that helps us use this form to help set up your freshman schedule appropriately. Okay. So this, again, is just asking you to specify your plans for the summer. You're going to complete that portion only if you plan on taking summer school. And then we would love for you to tell us the course that you plan to take over summer. That helps us to plan your schedule accordingly. The next section, you're going to complete that portion only if you plan on taking summer school. Type in the course elective you wish to take in place of. So that top box is the class that you're going to take. For instance, if you take health over the summer and if you get health out of the way in summer, what is the class, your first choice that you're wanting to take in place of that class in place of summer or in place of the class that you're taking in summer? Another example might be if you wanna go ahead and advance to a higher level of math and you decide, you know what? I'm gonna take algebra one CP over the summer so I can start geometry as a freshman and that's the right choice for you. Then again, you're gonna write in that top box, Algebra 1 CP, and then the class that you would like to take in place of that would be the geometry. So we do ask that you be very clear in your choices of how um, the classes that you wanna take in place of what you do in the summer. I love that um, example, but I do wanna say that as a counseling team, we really recommend you take Algebra 1 at the high, high school, school level or even at the middle school level. Um, geometry seems to be a popular summer school math option because it's not really a part of any of the other math classes that you would take going forward. Algebra will build. Algebra one, then detour. We take mm -hmm. geometry and then whiplash back to the algebra sequence, algebra, pre-calculus. -cal so we really, really would like you to take it in school. We find often that these summer programs, because they're so quick, they don't provide um, the foundational strength and depth that we would like to see in our students in order for them to be successful. So we will often have students who might take Spanish one in a summer program and then come and take Spanish two at Westlake and really struggle because that curriculum that they got through their summer program was not as rigorous as Westlake's program. And we like that we are appropriately rigorous, rigorous because that gives us a really good reputation when our students go to apply to college that a student with a Westlake diploma has a really solid education. Perfect. And these are the acknowledgements, kind of like the little waivers that you have to sign at the end of buying a car. These are just a lot of the ticky tack informational pieces that we want you to know. There's a lot. We presented on pretty much just the classes themselves, but there's a lot of other information that goes into being a high school student that does kind of impact your schedule and the course selection. So this one is you need six classes. Yes, you need six classes. No, you can't take two over the summer and have four the next year. You need six classes. That pretty much sums this one up here. Okay, 
And we're going to go through these acknowledgements just a bit quicker, just because you guys are going to have the opportunity to read these on your form and then go ahead and um, acknowledge that um, you understand and you agree to them. This is about the online correspondence course guidelines. This is a big one. Westlake High School students are able to take up to 40 credits to be placed on their Westlake High School transcript outside of our district. So um, they, whether it's a class, um, you know, really can be any class that they want to take as long as they take it at an accredited institution and the course that is offered there is transferable to our district. So there's a whole guideline um, document that you guys can go ahead and read, but we just really want to make it clear that the students know that they cannot add more than 40 credits from outside institutions onto the Wesson High School transcript. And please do know that health um, does count as five of those 40 credits. That's, that's something we really do want you all to understand is that that clock of that 40 credits starts ticking right after our students promote from eighth grade. So whether it's health, whether it's Spanish, whatever it is they take between eighth and ninth grade, that starts that um, 40 credit clock. And then this is the general information that we've over we've already reviewed about the honors and the AP level courses, just having an understanding of how rigorous they can be and that taking on these courses is challenging, figuring out into the year that they're not an appropriate fit for you and that you'd like to level change may lead to a situation where that the, the level um, down the CP level is not available. So really thinking critically about these classes and trying to use your crystal ball the best that you can. Okay. So this is a big one too, because we do realize that our students are making choices in February that are gonna affect them come August. And we do acknowledge that. However, it's really important that our students understand that what they submit to us at the end of next week is how we build our master schedule. We build it solely on these requests and the, the um, courses that our students are choosing to take. And so um, just please know that there are a lot of big decisions that go into this. Um, if students do change their mind, it's really important that they understand that we cannot um, guarantee that we can accommodate all of those changes or really just even one change. So, um, Please know that um, but we realize they're submitting this this week or next week. However, we are going to ask and we'll give a reminder um, that um, any requests to make changes to their schedule are submitted no later than May 15th, because that's when we're going to be building that master schedule. When I say we, I mean Mrs. Godfrey, and I know she would definitely appreciate that all these changes come in. So this is just that acknowledgement, that understanding. And after you submit all of this really long form, all of your classes, how are you going to remember what you selected? Don't worry, you're going to get a receipt emailed to you. So the very first box on this form that asks for the email address, and then it asks you for all that other contact info, it's that very first top one that will receive the receipt so that you can reference the courses you selected, wearing that summer brain drain, what elective did I pick? Oh yeah, look in my email. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So we have, we have run out of time. So we're going to do a, just a really quick um, couple of really commonly asked questions. Um, can counselors recommend a summer school health class for you? No, we cannot. Um, Westlake High School does not offer, nor does our district offer um, a program that um, guarantees that, you know, the class can be transferable. So that's what those, um, that correspondence course guideline, that's what that's there for. It will guide you, created by our district, um, and it has very helpful information on there. Um, question of can you, can students take said seven classes? Um, please know some of this information might change, um, but at this time, if that seventh class is choir, a band or orchestra class, theater, AVID, Ms. Nelson, and actually my favorite elective as well, or a sport that will allow the students to go one through seven. We do like them to keep a really good healthy balance. We talked to them about that for all four years, making sure that they're not pushing it too much so that they are um, able to stay strong for all four years. Um, I think we already talked about that foreign language starting at a more advanced level, taking a foreign language that we don't offer. We talked about that. Um, 
why would you hear from possibly Miss Nelson or Miss Kirksey over the summer? That's because there might be some conflicts that come about as we're building the master schedule. We really want to ensure that you have the classes that you choose. Um, if we have a question about your course contract, we might just come to you and um, that would be why. So, and to say hello and check on you all. So how do you get a hold of us? Um, we have so much information starting with for you students, go to our Instagram account right now. If you can pull your phones out and, and start getting a feel for the things that we share with our students on a, sometimes on a daily basis. We love communicating with our students this way. We started out really wondering if it would if it would spread and we have a lot of followers and we feel cool because of that. So please follow our Instagram. Um, Ms. Martell, our College and Career Center counselor puts out an amazing um, newsletter. We have an awesome counseling website. You guys can find our emails on there and contact our amazing counseling support staff. There are so many ways to get a hold of us and we, we're excited that you're coming and we look forward to communicating with you and especially seeing you all next week for those of you who have questions. We do realize that for time purposes, we wanna let you guys go and grab some dinner. We're so excited that you are here tonight. Um, we're excited for you to meet our entire team. You'll be able to do that next week. Come visit us on those Zooms next week. Please know it is first come first serve during that time of your birth month. Please be patient with us. If, if you're waiting in that waiting room, we will get you into our, into our Zoom breakout room. And um, please know we'll be looking at the questions in the chat box and um, we'll do our best to provide additional information on our website with the questions that you ask. And we thank you so much for being here and welcome class of 2025. Welcome to Westside High School. And the, the good news is um, that the form is active now and it's on our counseling okay. website. So if you feel like this information is fresh, go ahead over to Westlake High School, go to the counseling tab at the top, and it will be there for you. Perfect. Thank you all for coming tonight. We'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye.